All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm Bobby Hiller. I'm stationed here in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'm going to be uh, helping just to host today's event, but I'm not uh, the key or main speaker here. Um, we have Gary Burton with us, and he's going to be covering using the Haguro method and basic charting techniques. Before we dive uh, too far into things, though, I do have to just quickly go through our disclaimer. So this demonstration, it's designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins and is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. The Metastock and its employees shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Um, now that we've got that out of the way, uh, I want to give a big introduction here to Gary. Uh, Gary's tuning in here from all the way from Australia. Uh, so he's, um, you know, been a partner with us here at Metastock for a really long time. He's really experienced in the industry, and we're really excited to have him on today. Um, I'm not going to go too far into the specifics of everything uh, from him. I'm going to kind of let you do some of that yourself, Gary. Um, and let's see here. So what I'm going to do, I know you're in here with me, is go ahead and uh, make you the presenter. And then you're going to be able to take things from here and I'm going to be in the background. So if anyone has any questions throughout, you can ask them over in uh, YouTube or in the GoToWebinar chat and I can chime in and, and ask Gary and we can uh, answer questions as we go along here. Uh, with that said, yeah, let me go ahead and pass the reins over to Gary. All right. All right. So uh, now let me get myself set up here. Of course. There we go. All right. I see your screen with uh, the Metastock charts on it, and now I yep. see your PowerPoint. Okay. So that should be the full screen. Uh, yep, that looks right. I'll go ahead and uh, get out of your hair. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Bobby, and thanks Metastock so much uh, for allowing me to present today. Uh, it's always a, always a pleasure to present uh, for Metastock. Been with them for a long time. Uh, Jeff Gibby and I met in Sydney in 2012. And out of that meeting, he liked some of the ideas that I was working with and we got together and programmed them into Metastock. Uh, we, uh, in particular, the Haguro method that uh, I'm going to go through today. But first of all, I am going to uh, take a look at some basic charting techniques. So there's my disclaimer. Uh, Bobby pretty much covered it, but there's my disclaimer. And uh, I really do want to go into just some basic charting uh, observations or price structure observations in charts that many retail uh, traders miss. And I work with a number of retail traders. I, I work one-on-one -on -one occasionally with, with people and the same issue comes through all the time. They really don't look into the into the structure of price uh, as price unfolds and what that structure looks like. So I'm going to go through some very, very basic observations for the more experienced traders here. I um, hope it reinforces uh, what you know, but uh, we'll take a look at a few things. So the Haguro method, uh, initially, I'll just introduce this first. The Haguro method was came out of this book called The Japanese Chart of Charts, a book I found uh, around about 2002 or so, I got my head into it. Uh, very difficult to read, very badly translated um, into English. A lot of um, misphrasing in the sentences and such. But uh, it, it covered uh, a daily observation and a weekly observation, which was the Haguro method. So we'll be looking looking at that. But there's some very uh, interesting observations in the book that was written, what, 50 years ago now. Uh, so part of that was that it gave an introduction to candles. A lot of people go through this this observation that um, really the first charts sort of came out in the 1700s, 1800s, uh, and uh, the ports uh, city of Sakata was a marketplace for distribution point for Shono rice. Now um, Hana uh, was a trader there uh, of the cash rice market within the city. Or oh, my charismatic person, he was feared throughout the land as a fierce trader. 
And so as it is today, when it shines in Sarkata, it's cloudy in Dojima. In other words, when there's a good rice crop uh, in Sarkata, the prices fall on the Dojima exchange from oversupply. And uh, a lot of commodities players would be interested in that comment. Um, he had six uh, methods that he used, um, some of them quite obvious. Without being greedy, think of time and price by looking at past price movements. So we look at our past price movements to ascertain uh, where we might be heading in the future. Uh, no one can see into the future in market pricing, but uh, we can at least form a view out of that. So we aim, of course, at selling at the ceiling and buying at the bottom, and one should increase one's position three times after a rise and liquidate after a fall. And then the strategies were that if a forecast is incorrect, one should pick up the error as soon as possible, and then we should rest. And that means we don't take the revenge trade or try and um, double our position or whatever we think we might need to do. And we should liquidate on the way up. So uh, 79 to 80% of a profitable position before the market has reached a ceiling or a bottom and fully liquidate and reverse a position when the market shows a top and bottom. Um, so it's really a, uh, it's so true even in today's market where you'll see institutional um, flow selling into a rising market because that's where the liquidity is. And so as technical traders, we must consult the market about the market. We look at the market movement itself and the trader should look at market movements as the ebb and flow of the greater market emotions. That's all the market is. This is simply a flow of market emotions around price and the most obvious statement, of course, is that the chart only reflects the past movements of the market, and now, how, no matter how long we look at the chart, it is still correct to say we're unable to predict future prices. Um, as far as wanting to the predict future prices, the chart comes the closest to achieving this desired outcome. One of the key aspects around this is we do the work in, in the chart. We ask the chart to uh, show us what the market is doing and interpret it that way. And so it comes down to that, as everyone knows, nothing adds more to the severe realities of trading than the day-to-day -day price movements. And then, of course, no two patterns are exactly the same. And the real application in, is to identify tops and bottoms when they have been set, not predict tops and bottoms, of course. So that was uh, essentially the, the thinking behind uh, his method, methodology of, of trading as something that's still relevant uh, even more so today with the volatilities that we've got in the market uh, going through. And so we'll take a look at some observations that um, will help you break down your uh, view of charts, if you like. So when we talk about um, primary moves and uh, secondary movements, so a primary move is essentially when we get these very directional, very directional type of uh, price uh, observation, when price is rising or even falling, uh, becomes a primary move. So on the daily chart, it looks looks like this on the left hand side, and on the weekly chart, it looks like this on the right hand side. So it's uh, the directional moves will break down into a primary chart and then we get these consolidations of, of secondary consolidations and as soon as we start to see price overlap each other where the bars the candles actually overlap each other uh, we straight away would start to view this as a developing uh, secondary market until we see a break one way or the other so in the weekly chart these secondary markets uh, this top area up here weekly market shows that the secondary market is inside, the, the current market is inside the previous week's market, and so we have this developing uh, secondary market. Um, secondary markets are often the important place to start to look for, uh, really look for direction rather than chase price out uh, higher or chase price lower if you're shorting. Um, but secondary markets, uh, it's said that secondary markets will last from three weeks to many months and we'll certainly see that in some charts that we look at uh, today. So it's that's the homework that we do. That's the, if we move away from the social media, looking for social media for our trade ideas and start to look inside our price action in our charts, we'll start to see these developments in price that will really stand out. And this is where the work comes from, is going through your charts, your watch lists and your, your favorite stocks uh, day after day, looking for that, uh, looking for that observation 
in price. So another uh, in Tesla, um, just late last year, early January, uh, big secondary markets in here during November, December, broke to the high side and then broke to the lower side. So in the weekly chart, all it looks like is a is a movement higher with a secondary market stuck in the middle there. So it's an important observation, the secondary market, because it also, I'll go through some uh, concepts in a moment, but it also gives us a broader picture view when you stand back and look at uh, a little bit more data. So when we talk about trend in markets, inside uh, Metastock, there's a very handy little tool uh, called the zigzag tool. And if we apply a, a zigzag tool over our chart, use a 10% range. So price must move 10% in a direction before it will pick up, um, start to pick up and start to swing. Now, 10% is an arbitrary number. We've found through Jeff Gibby and I, when we developed the Haguro method, we found 10%, uh, seven to 10% was a great uh, range to work with. And this is a method, if you like, of working out where the, where the trend is actually going. And when we apply the zigzag tool, the things that we should notice, of course, are the whether the market's making higher highs or lower highs along the way and lower lows and then higher highs. So if we're try, trying to buy a long position and the market is actually trending down on a weekly basis, this is done on a weekly basis. Uh, if the market is trending down, then our uh, outcome, our uh, potential outcome might be quite limited. It's the work is really tr finding um, a, a breaking uptrend uh, in stocks, which means you might have to go through your watch list uh, week after week to find them at times. But the observation when we talk about a, um, a Dow theory type of trend where markets are moving into a bullish phase is when the first high is broken. Uh, market makes a trough, market makes a high, market makes a higher low area and then breaks that high, we declare that there is an uptrend in place. And so that observation on this chart that we just looked at means that back down here, it broke into an uptrend in this area here and uh, hopefully continues that and then broke into a downtrend, made the low, made the lower high and broke that low and broke into a downtrend and then set the low, set the lower high and higher low and then broke into an uptrend. Um, so that's the, get out of your chair, stand behind your chair and look at your charts over, over a couple of years of data and you'll see the trends start to stand out. 10% is a very useful tool to get started with. Uh, you'll see in this secondary movement up here on the right hand side, it really didn't swing the 10% at that time uh, didn't give us a signal that there might be a top in place and currently markets consolidating up there on the right hand side. Very good explanation of Dow theory is found in uh, Victor Sprandio's book Methods of a Wall Street Master um, has a very very good uh, explanation of Dow theory itself but when we look at trends uh, when Dow declared that there was a bull market or a bear market required several indices to uh, confirm each other, the transports and the industrials. And so we use that same method in stocks, uh, in liquid stocks, to find the highs and the higher lows where liquidity uh, is flowing. So within that chart, of course, we have uh, primary moves, what's declared as a primary move, and then secondary consolidations. Now this is a weekly chart again, and you'll see that uh, I mentioned that secondary consolidations last from three weeks to many months. We can see uh, in this area up here between, really between June, November, with this secondary market which lasted many months and coming into late last year, uh, we developed into a secondary market again over a period of two months. Um, so it's in their important observation, uh, the secondary consolidation, they can be frustrating if you're holding a position, but they're also the area where you should be doing your work to see where the break is coming. And so identifying a downtrend, as I mentioned, requires the high, requires a higher low, and then the lower high and a break of the previous low, then a downtrend is declared again. And I, and I stress this, this um, is done on a weekly chart. 
the key uh, issue with this is that when you see, oh, let me go to the next chart. So in this uh, weekly chart uh, of a coal stock, uh, we see we put in the lower high here and broke to the low. Uh, the observation, of course, is this. And it broke into a uptrend on the right-hand side. Um, the key uh, issue with this is when you look inside these declines on a weekly basis and you might see a green green bar in there without any confirmation of trend if you go down to a shorter time frame you'll often find this in a daily time frame or intraday time frame will look like a trend uh, higher highs and higher lows but it really out in these larger time frames where the where the real money flows is the place to be looking for trends and trend breaks uh, and you can see immediately what your risk might be in there that you can see the the price swings of 10% in price, whether that suits your particular um, investment decision, um, it really highlights your risk in what uh, declines can do. We often find that uh, in normal, um, normal price movements, when we see an advance, for example, from this June low here uh, in 2023, we saw the advance into September. Uh, these declines that occur in a normal um, trending action can be up to 60% of the initial advance. And so it, in those sort of cases, it knocks a lot of, um, not, knocks a lot of uh, traders out of the market, particularly if you're using leverage of some sort. But uh, these declines uh, are necessary to create the trending action. And of course, then the market, you look back and then the market's uh, simply moved higher. And again, this decline uh, through here from this, around about the $7.80 mark back to the $6.70-ish mark in there is about 50% of this actual advance. So these declines are observed around, as in the average of averages, observed around 30 to 60% decline against the initial advance. Uh, not, at, not at price, but against the initial range of the advance. Um, in there so it's um, something to be aware of particularly if you're starting out uh, in your charting uh, really do some work around that and see um, see how that um, it, uh, unfolds so we can see when we start to look at this from a primary um, and secondary type of action we had the primary move on the right hand, left sorry left hand side a secondary consolidation at the top broke into a primary move down very strong move so a primary move again is where the bars literally stand on top of each other and we get some very strong ranges. And again, here in this primary move down, uh, down through here, secondary market is the overlapping price area, the primary move down again, and then a very strong move. Secondary market for four weeks, a uh, bit of a move higher, secondary market for four weeks, and then a primary bar on the way down. Secondary market again, and the primary bar down again, primary move up again, starting to trend and came in with a higher low and moves out into a higher high. So this is the this is the observation that we use throughout our observation of charts when someone says, well, have a look at this chart. First thing I do is I open up a weekly chart and have, really have a look at where this thing is going. When they talk about um, current bull markets in silver and gold, um, you'll find that silver is actually not trending, it's range trading, um, and gold is actually has uh, has a primary trend. So the, the next concept around that is we really want to start to identify where the swing point might be uh, in these in these charts. So I've got um, a bit of a graphic display here. A thing um, a, a thing called a spike high or a high point in the market requires a uh, market makes a high price. We're not interested in the body of the candle at all. We're really interested in just the range from the high to low. Uh, but market makes a high up through here and the following bar has a lower high and the previous bar has a lower high. So this is declared as the spike point, as the spike, in this case, a spike high point and requires these three bars to complete that picture. Uh, and the spike low, of course, is the opposite. Where market has made a low on this bar, made a lower low on this bar, and then made a higher low on this bar. And so 
uh, in observation, we have a higher low either side of the low and is identified as a spike low point. So you will find one of these at every single swing point in your charts. Um, they're there, but there are some that are more important than others. So we want to qualify out what that low or that swing point would look like and something that you can actually backtest and put a statistical number to in whatever stock you're looking at. And one way to do that is through a valid pivot point. And this is not the pivot point that uh, floor traders use to create support and resistance. This is simply a pivot uh, in price observation where market has made a series of lows in the bars and then the low uh, bar here is a spike low because it has a higher low next door. And in that bar, the closing price of that following bar is above the high of the bar that actually makes the low. So now we can categorize that uh, into a pivot point and in a chart, it looks like that. Um, simply, uh, color of the body is, is irrelevant at this stage, but until we get to here, and the closing price must be above the high of the bar that makes the low. So then we have a valid pivot point in place, and we can back test that to uh, on individual stocks, on indices, to work out the validity of that swing and whether that offers a trading opportunity or not. And it works itself into the genre of buy low, sell high. Um, breakout trading, well, there's, yeah, okay. Um, I think buy low, sell high is probably a better strategy, uh, but it requires a little bit of work on your charts to observe that. If you're a short-term trader, daily charts will show you this. If you're a longer-term trader, then look for the swing uh, in the weekly charts, but it occurs in all time frames. And so, and when we see the highs, we have the exact opposite view. Uh, we have the high and we see a closing price below the low of the bar that makes the high. Valid pivot point. And we'll accept up to three bars after the high. One, two in this case. So this is the picture uh, here on the right-hand side, what that looks like. Um, up here, we had a spike high point just here and we didn't see a close below there, so there was no pivot reversal. And up further up here, we do have a spike high with a lower high beside it, and we see the closing price is below the low of the bar that made the high, so we have a valid pivot point in place. And so, as I said, we'll accept uh, three bars, up to three bars, and that's the limit, uh, is simply up to three bars, uh, where the closing price, uh, has a chance to close over the high of the bar that makes the low. So you notice I've got a 20 plus uh, spike low there. We'll take a look at that, uh, what that uh, helps, how that helps us filter out our price action going forward. So there's our chart observation. This is the bar that made the low here, the down close bar, and here is one, two, three bars, and we have the close over that high. Also point out in this in this little chart piece, we had uh, the same here, the bar that made the low, we had a closing price over that high, uh, which is a valid pivot point. In this case, it failed and then set a new one uh, a little lower in there. So stop loss uh, is your key to survival in this market. A lot of people ask me or infer that I, somehow I know what the secret is to trading. Um, the closest I've come to it is it's your management of your stops is your key to success uh, in trading. So a uh, valid pivot point is set up that way. So there we see um, the break of the high uh, closing price and sets up the valid pivot. So when we work through our charts, particularly daily charts on this observation of spike highs and spike lows, we start to see there's kind of like a lot of them. They kind of show up everywhere. If you went through and marked every one of them, um, there's a lot. And there we go. Uh, so then we need to really decide, well, hang on, which ones are important? So if we filter this out by looking at at least a 20-day uh, spike high or a 20-day spike low, 
that means the highest price in the previous 20 days. And I've got a rather busy little picture here of what that looks like. And so uh, down here where I've got the 20, we do a count back at 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. So this is the lowest low uh, within 20 bars. And then we set, uh, we didn't see a valid pivot in there. We set another low down through here. And then we set another low down through here and we saw a valid pivot, which failed. And then another low down here, a 20 day low. And then we saw a valid pivot, which uh, resulted in this movement up through here. And then also that resulted in a 20 period spike high. Uh, the highest high price in the last 20 bars. So the observation is the observation is that when you start to look at 20 period spike highs and spike lows, they tend to show up at, congest at, at significant congestion points and at significant lows and offer some insight into potential trend changes and potential swing points uh, in uh, markets. So filtering out the 20 day um, high and, or the 20 day spike low, spike high, spike low, is a method of, of really finding the, the valid swing points and removing a lot of noise off your chart that uh, may not be of interest to you. So the coding uh, for that is here. Um, the guys at Metastock can confirm that for you, but that's the coding uh, required. Um, and the observation was made by Lawrence Connor. He wrote a book called Street Smarts with Linda Ratchke. And he said, with so many trend following breakout traders in the investment area, the rewards are large when a breakout fails and reverses. And statistically, uh, breakout, um, when we look at an actual breakout, the statistics around that around about a 60% failure. So the turtle traders, as everyone knows, use that method uh, as, a, as a trading method, made millions out of that. When you read into the detail, they had extremely tight uh, stop losses, uh, but they just kept the winners and let the winners run. And that was their secret to their success, simple as that. They uh, managed their trade uh, on the way through and we're willing to take um, stops very quickly on that. So let's take a look what we came here for. Let's take a look at the Haguro method, uh, which is now programmed into Metastock uh, in this. So the Haguro method, Haguro method only used on a weekly chart. So when you do your scans uh, based around this, um, we're only looking at this on a weekly chart. Reading the, the book, the Japanese chart of charts, it was very specific about that. The candles, we uh, had the candles all numbered um, as a particular type of candle and um, it's it really quite invalid on daily charts and intraday charts, that type of thing. But on weekly charts, this is where the strength of a guru uh, comes in. So that means our explorations are conducted on a Friday or the weekends. Uh, it's really quite of no value to look uh, during the week. It becomes quite confusing. Uh, so we do our exploration late Friday afternoon, uh, getting ready for our thinking uh, into the next week, uh, or of course our research over the weekend. One of the key components of observing the Haguro method on a weekly chart is the discerning between what's a long period and a short period, and it's quite simply looking at the range of the bar or the candle against the previous ranges of two or three bars back uh, as to whether it's a long period or, or a short period. So here on the left, we have a long period. Um, that's the observation. There's nothing more to read in it than that, than it's a long period. And of course, the short period is um, a short range when compared to against the previous ranges, uh, two or three bars back, and really nothing else to read into that. The second part of Haguro is looking at where the body or the open and close part of the, of the week sits inside the weekly range. Um, candles are made of two components, as you know, the range and the body. And the trader is con concerned with viewing both the range and the position of the body within the range. 
And so our observation, of course, is we have a low body, uh, open, close, low body compared to the range, and we have a high body uh, compared to the range in here. So this is the key behind the Haguro method, is looking at where the, the open close sits inside the weekly range. So it's been out for the week and where it's come home uh, and actually closed is, is very, very important. So the Haguro classifies weekly candles into eight types of green candle. And the key, as I mentioned, is this middle point. So it's the middle of the range uh, is the key to Haguro. And here we have a candle number one, which has the open close of the body. The green candle has the open close of the body below the range that it's set during the week. Number two has the range that covers, open close covers the middle of the range during the week. And number three has the open close um, at the high end of the range that would where it had been during the week. This is, uh, we'll just keep an eye on this, this number three. This is one of the key key candles that we search for in, that we can search for inside Metastock, uh, is set up to search for this number three. Um, a lot of people view this as a bullish candle. In fact, it's actually a very bearish candle uh, when looked at on a weekly basis. Number four has uh, shaven uh, top, bozu top, and there's no wick at the top, but has a wick at the bottom, but the body covers the middle of the range for the week. And number five is the inverse of that, where we, green candle, but has a shaven base. Uh, these don't show up very often, uh, but they're there. And number six has the shaven base again, where the body has closed uh, below the middle of the range of the week. And number seven uh, has a shaven top and number eight shaven uh, opened uh, simply at the low and closed at the highest price for the week. So that's our range of, they're the only weekly candle, the only definition or, or the observation we can see in weekly candles. And of course, the opposite is, opposite is so in the down closed candles for the week. And again, they're all numbered. Um, trust me, there's a reason for the numbering not being uh, in sequential along the bottom. But uh, here we have a number nine uh, here, which has the body open close above the middle of the range of the week and 16 across the range of the week, 15, of course. This is the other bar that we search for, number 15 is searchable inside uh, Guru method in Metastock. Uh, number 13 has a shaven base, but the body, the open close of the week covers the middle of the range for the week. And number 12 is the opposite, where we have a shaven top and the body covers and the, the range of the week. And we have a shadow at the bottom or wick at the bottom. And of course, number 10, shaven uh, high. And uh, number 14 is shaven low. And of course, number 11, which is uh, simply opens at the high price and closes at the low price for the week. So there the observation in, that's the Haguro uh, classification of weekly candles. And when we look at uh, inside uh, Metastock, we can apply the Haguro as a template um, to your charts. So if we're looking at, uh, simply working in the charting area, uh, we come down here, we need to set our interval as weekly on there and apply a template. We apply the Haguro template and work from there. And yep, and work from there. So in our charting, weekly uh, apply a template Haguro method uh, on there. So this is what comes up when you um, open that template on a chart. There's a couple of things going on here. Apart from all of the candles being numbered uh, into uh, uh, candles being numbered by the Guru method and the software, of course, works out the range. And so we have this number three here. The ones colored in, the ones colored in blue are the important ones that we need to look for. And uh, we've uh, highlighted those out just as a neutral color. This can be changed in the background, uh, in the settings in the background, but uh, we've colored them in blue. And so there's a candle numbering going on. Then there's this black line, which is our midpoint. And I'll go into that in just a minute. And up the top here, we have a range indicator. 
So Jeff has very cleverly used the zigzag tool to um, program in a range indicator. And we notice that uh, the, the two uh, horizontal lines are set at 10%, plus 10%, minus 10%. So we're really looking for ranges outside of that 10%. So earlier we mentioned in our trend analysis that we'll use 10% as a basic range, 10% um, or better as a basic range for our trend analysis. This incorporates that into the Haguro template and, uh, and basically says that once we sort of cross that top line up through here, we've already extended 10% of price off our low swing point down here. And so it just simply shows you that range and suddenly we've put in a swing top here and the indicator has reversed, or the measurement has reversed. So it's an important observation. I'll get into that a little bit uh, more in a moment. So on the, um, also on the um, chart, we can bring in the um, expert commentary uh, we can view our expert commentary. It will open this window and give you a description of the last candle and what its outcome might be. And also points out in this case that the range has not extended more than 7%. 7 this means that the candles are less uh, significant. So this um, it just means that this indicator is sitting inside that 10 to 10 range. And there we are, number three, at the, right at the high there. So this was done uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, in this particular stock. So we can apply our commentary, our expert commentary on the side. And there's another example of that, uh, of using the um, um, expert commentary. Uh, brings, we, if we click on each number, it will switch the expert advisor to that, uh, to that number and give you the uh, description for that particular number. So let's uh, take a look. So two, two key observations uh, in this. Again, we're stuck with our primary movement, our secondary movements uh, in our charts. We, that's really a strong observation. And what we find then is the swing point, the red line, uh, will start to identify significant swing points uh, in our chart and when market has extended more than 10% of range and starts to show a significant swing point. Uh, and here we have a decline of more than 10% and we have put in a swing point in there. So the observation, once we get into these lows here, the observation of our bars become very, very important and more and more uh, effective uh, going forward. So again, um, out here we have um, a swing uh, so the observation of what's going on up here uh, becomes very important. And really our consolidation through here, our primary move and our secondary consolidation again, and looks like we're heading into this uh, move lower at this stage. So the other observation with that is the black line. So we call that midpoint support resistance. So Metastock uses the largest range from the previous three bars. So in developing out the midpoint, uh, support and resistance. So this is a 50% support resistance level of the largest range bars. And we use the largest range of the of the previous three bars. So in over on the left here, we have the midpoint range set on this bar, number 16. This sets uh, our support level uh, going forward. And because this bar is the largest range bar of the previous Bar. So as the chart develops, we see that this bar became a larger range than the previous three bars. So the support resistance level moves to this midpoint and goes forward. And then we have this number nine bar here that set up a very large range, larger than the previous three bars, and that sets our midpoint. Uh, and the midpoint is the range, nothing to do with the body, it's the range high to low. Uh, sets up our midpoint support resistance. And we find that, that in future price movements, that acts as a form of support or a form of resistance. Uh, if that, if that uh, line is broken by price, we see that often see declines um, continue or uh, the beginning of a decline 
when that midpoint support off the large range bar is broken. So when we start to observe, um, going back to what we discussed earlier, we can see here number one bar, and I'll come to the descriptions individually in just a moment, but in price movement, we saw the high, we saw the closing price below the low of that bar, so an immediate pivot point is in place and support was held and then a week later support was broken and uh, it moved lower. So it becomes um, an important observation with our charting techniques uh, as well. And so that's our support level, mid-range support. And this stock with this Apple um, currently has a mid-range resistance of 174. Uh, this chart was done just a couple of days ago. Um, I didn't look at Apple last night, but uh, currently that resistance is um, 174.36 measured here on the right-hand scale. So that's our that's our template. Uh, in when you apply the template onto the chart, you can bring in the expert advisor, which will give you an explanation of the potential outcome looking forward of each individual bar. One thing to be cautious of is that if you do this during the week, the current weekly bar will show up as incomplete. Um, it's currently midweek at the moment, so this bar is to be ignored until we see the close of the week, and it, this will change number uh, as the week develops, as the bar develops, until Friday when it is set as the final uh, final observation. Um, also inside the Explorer, we can search for these um, candle 15 uh, and candle three um, when they show up on weekly charts and uh, it's done inside the Explorer. Again, set on a weekly observation. Um, and in this case, I did a quick search on the S&P 500 and uh, looking for these tops of the bars. Uh, we start the exploration down here on the right hand side and we're looking for these types of bars. So the key uh, here, line number three on the left hand side, uh, with these lines we can see the body of the candle is above or below the median point of the price line. When line three is found at a high price area, long position should be closed within a week. I mentioned earlier, that this type of candle is often viewed as a bullish candle uh, in often in day-to-day -day charts, but in a weekly basis, it's actually a bearish candle and can indicate a high um, in the following weeks. And then uh, line number 15, line 15 indicates erratic price movements in the following weeks as this line makes an appearance when the line is declining and can indicate a low price area. So we look for this type of bar in a low price area. Um, and I'll come high price, low price is based around that uh, swing. Uh, when found in a high price area, close long positions when the following week trades and closes below the line 15 low, then simply take short positions. So it's not trading advice, but it's um, certainly um, some observations that you can make. Uh, and the key here is line 15 is found in a low price area and the following line is green. This is a strong buying. Uh, all short positions should be closed and long positions open. The key thinking behind that is that during this week, uh, because retail traders don't move the market, they think they do, but they actually don't, uh, is that there was a short cover. Uh, short cover took place during the week. Once that was complete, then uh, natural selling um, off lower volume came in and just simply closed it down here. But uh, the big money, once it covers the short, starts to look for the long side um, when value comes in. So we can search um, for that. And here I've done um, Hagura 15, Hagura number three. These stocks came up uh, on that search. This was done Monday, uh, Sunday evening, Monday morning. Uh, so this um, came up and uh, we can look at a couple of those charts here. So uh, Lumen Technology uh, put in um, this 15 bar here. Uh, we'll ignore this uh, last bar because this is the current price uh, where, where the stock is currently trading at as this week develops. But we're searching for this 15 and there it is there. So uh, a reversal line when found in a high price area or low price area 
uh, when found in a high price area, close long positions when the following week trades and closes below the low. So it's set uh, this week is starting to close below the low, which is a bit interesting. Um, and whoops, sorry. Um, and uh, line 15 is found in a low price area and the following line is green. This is indicating strong buying pressure. All short positions should be closed and long positions open. So there's one. They're not a great example in a low price area, but there's the 15 bar. The following bar was green and the market rallied the following week. So week to week observation, of course, because markets are very dynamic uh, at the moment. So or at the moment, always. And so that's uh, one of the observations that we can make. Uh, line number three, this was the other bar that we searched for. Um, interestingly enough, um, let me go back. In that uh, search, only one stock came up uh, with a 15 bar in it out of the S&P 500. Uh, and a number of them came up uh, looking for bar number three. And so uh, is a strong warning of reversal when found in a high, high price area. When line three is found in a high price area, long positions should be closed within a week. So really sort of telling you that um, things are starting to top out a bit. And we saw that here. We saw the low down through here, price rally, nice move up. Then a number three bar was set. Uh, our swing uh, indicator is out above 10%. So this becomes quite relevant. And then we saw the market decline into these lows. Uh, set a number one bar, number two bar, and then number one bar again, and set up a pivot point on through there. So the resistance level at that point was along there, around about 150 odd dollars, and simply crossed that uh, resistance level, set the support level, and the market rallied higher and currently has set a number three, uh, which is indicating um, strong uh, indication a reversal is coming uh, on that. And so another one here, Ecolab, again, um, set 15 and a three. This will uh, come through. Hey, Gary, uh, a quick question for you. Yes. Yeah, Dennis wants to know if the Higuro method takes into account the importance of volume within a candle. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Um, but there's no volume calculation inside Higuro. Uh, volume tends to be with the large range, as everyone knows. Uh, volume tends to be, uh, we can see here, at swing points. Um, interesting question about volume, and I and I ruffle a few feathers with this comment that I don't take a lot of notice of volume uh, on a day-to-day -day basis because of the issue of other things in the background, like options, expiries, uh, rollovers. You know, buybacks, that type of thing, uh, really kind of at times distorts uh, volume observations. Um, sorry to all the people that follow volume, uh, but in my world, um, it's not a great observation. Um, what is an observation is um, we can see here volume declining, of course, into into here. Uh, we had the number three candle, and we now we have the reverse. Not on great volume, I'll give it that, because the trend is actually up. So this might actually offer uh, at some point uh, a trend rever a swing point reversal um, inside this already established uh, trend. Then if volume comes in there, yes, there's a, there's an observation to be made there. But um, <clears throat> no, inside the Guru method, no, it's not taken um, as part of the calculation at all. Uh, so we saw this number three out here at the um, when the um, extension was out here well over 10%, uh, this moves underway. Now it's starting to set a swing point uh, as this declines uh, into the middle of the range there. Uh, again, uh, Universal Health, uh, number three candle turned up last week, and this week we're seeing the decline. Um, the week is not finished. I stress that this last bar in this current week, uh, the week is not um, complete. And this really needs to be observed again on Friday to um, ascertain uh, the value of this uh, number three, whether this actually has followed through. But uh, history tells us there's another three there that followed through for a week. Uh, number three there, not really a high price area, but uh, nothing came of that. So if we set up strategies around that, like for example, 
Number three bar turns up here last week. Uh, this week, we're starting to close below that low. So there's a potential we have a, a valid swing point coming in on this particular stock. Might be a great reason to evaluate your position if you're sitting on this um, without any cognitive bias about this is going to the moon. Uh, but this is certainly putting in a swing point. If that's important to you uh, in your position, then this is the signal to act on uh, right there. So when we look through the um, the candles, I'll go through a couple of the descriptions uh, that we saw um, at the bottom of this presentation. Again, this reinforces that the middle price is the key uh, in this observation. It's whether the body is below or above the middle of the of the um, range of the week. Again, these are the bars. This number three is the one that we search for, and number fifteen here is also the one that we search for in there. And so uh, in this um, observation, we can see that line one, after one week's movement, the body is below the midpoint, indicating buying at a lower price, but rejection of a high price. So it was rejected during the week up here. The following price lines, even if a rise in price takes place, will be limited and a lower price will be set. Small fluctuations occur uh, in the down, uh, with a downtrend. If price declines from this week, look for a rising price within a few days. So this is uh, signaling that if you find that this at inside a downtrend, it's signaling that a swing point may be coming in. If you find this in an uptrend, uh, in, a, in a primary uh, move up and it sets this number bar, um, the following price rises are starting to get limited because selling has already started to enter into the market on there. So there's our um, number one up through here, and there's our number nine bar in there. So key observations, uh, number one, really after a movement higher, said that uh, really has set the high price, and we saw um, a retest of the high, but then we saw the uh, pivot come in, closing price below the low of the bar that made the high within three bars, one, two, three, so that's our official pivot point. And here the market has declined uh, following that. So line number nine appears with the body above the midpoint, the closing price low in the open. If it's a short line, the trader should wait for the market to show direction. Following price movements can engulf this short movement. Uh, when there's a long line, selling is indicated. Let me go back one chart here. So number nine here, and it says that the following price movements can engulf this line. So we saw the next week and the next week really trade inside that range of that, that line um, until we see something more decisive uh, in our observations, uh, in our in our uh, price observations, because Haguro is, of course, very dynamic. It develops every week. Observations, new observations come in uh, every week uh, that we need to take a notice of. The classification of line 2 and 16 uh, is where the body lays midway midway between the high and the low. This is very, very common, uh, very, very common bars. Concerning line number two, it appears at the outset of a rise in the market and a further opening price above the midpoint and the following price movement should occur. After four weeks of upward movement, the trade should be liquidated. If you look inside your weekly charts, um, generally four weeks movement is about the average of upward movement before you move into some sort of secondary or reversal point. Uh, on your charts. Wait for next week's price to open above the midpoint of the line. The price closes below the midpoint of the line. Close any long positions. And so number two, um, set at a low price. The price here has declined. This is line 16 at a low price. Then line number two, uh, price opened above the midpoint of that week and we saw this rally uh, into um, higher than one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And then we start to see uh, the selling come in um, on uh, in our prices. Uh, line 16, of course, is the opposite. It's a down close line on a regular basis, an indication of a high point or low point in prices. Um, and the observation here again is we saw this one here, the second last one, line 16 also, then a line 16, and then we start to see the swing uh, out of that and the close above the high of that week. Uh, sets up our valid swing point, and uh, we're looking, and when we analyze our charts, of course, 
uh, week after week uh, with that. Line 16 at a high price and set the, uh, this following week set the close below the bar. line three found in a high price area. Long position should be closed within a week and um, if the opening of the following week is above the midpoint, selling is still indicated. So it really does indicate that there's a potential um, top in place and uh, line number three, when we see a rally in prices, uh, really indicates that the potential for a top to come in. And we saw the valid swing here and market decline uh, from that. And of course, line 15 indicates erratic price movements. But the key with line 15 is if it's found in a low price area, here we are, line 15 is found in a low price area and the following line is green. This is a strong buying line. As I mentioned earlier, this is often the short cover during this week uh, because they need to buy into a, um, when there's lots of stock on offer uh, to cover the short positions and uh, on volume and uh, long positions could be opened uh, out of there. So there's line 15 in a high price area and there's line 15 in a low price area and the following line is green and we had a number two bar, number two bar I think again and we had one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks and we should think of uh, exiting out of there um, if we're a um, medium term trader. Uh, one of the key uh, observations around this also is the Bozu type candle when they appear as a long line compared to the previous two weeks they hold a great pair of the chart going forward so which is a shaven, shaven base. So they really are, um, uh, there it is there, um, so it really sets up, uh, we can see the middle, I haven't drawn this in, we can see the middle of that range acted as a support level over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks, um, which is a long time between drinks if you're sweating on a position, but uh, there it is, it's held that uh, support level and we see the market start to trend um, after that. Um, so essentially uh, line 13 uh, found in a high price area compared to the previous lines, in this case it's an outside range and no trading has taken place above the midpoint. So a very strong warning that there's a top in place with line 15. Um, and again line 5 and these doesn't turn up very often, line 12 also doesn't turn up very often but they have um, <clears throat> line 12, although a red line can be found in a low price area is a strong probability of a green line appearing which means the selling is done. When found in a high price area, if the following week fails to trade above the midpoint and closes below the low price, indicates a break in price. Uh, and there it is there. Um, here is the as the high and line five in the low price area. So the really the market on the Monday has opened from the get-go and just simply um, buying, only buying has taken place. Um, there's the 12 in there, which really consolidated the market in the following weeks. And so when you um, continue to observe these um, uh, bars in your chart, um, you'll see and using them with a little bit of um, pricing technique around the spike low swing point, there's your swing point bar, um, there's your 12, which should indicate the high, but uh, we had a close above that level and so on and the markets rallied, there's the bar in the high price area. So I'm, I talk about this high price, low price area, it's simply, um, uh, as best we can do, it's simply an observation of when you get these primary moves underway and something has extended itself 10% or more, we're starting to look at that as a high, what we call a high price area, leaving the low behind these areas up here and up here become the high price areas and really where um, people start to take profits, uh, the bigger money starts to take profits and so on. So line 6 and 10, um, line 10, um, line 10 over here, uh, an immediate buying line, higher prices may, may take one to two weeks and line 6 if found in very high prices after a very strong advance, the immediate reaction is to gap down and we see that uh, often in um, exhaustion moves where um, price has simply moved uh, back into the, the low of the, uh, in the early part of the week uh, opening prices area and we saw the gap down and that really sets the decline uh, in place. Um, line number six, um, oh sorry, line number 10 in a as immediate buying line, 
and confirmed here with a pivot that set uh, closed above the high of the bar that made the low and we saw the rally in place uh, following that we saw another one here and the closing price above that that low and a continuation so there are the um, there the descriptions of the lines that they're all inside the um, Explorer in there line number seven of course found in a high price a, a strong warning of weakness very similar to line number three uh, in its price movement, a place to close long positions. It shows a lower price being made during the week. And we cannot disregard, um, if we're working from week to week, we cannot disregard what's occurred during the week when when uh, traders have been active. There was a low price set during the week. And then as the week uh, overcame that and closed at a high price. And going back to the question on volume, this is often uh, an ideal bar to start to look for volume if we see volume selling, which occurred during the week. And uh, line number 14, a red closing BOSU, no, no wick at the bottom. Uh, unlike the daily line being a wick, this line is considered very strong when found in a low price area. So buying should take place the following week. And we qualify that buying by looking at a, uh, there's our line number seven, uh, in there which mark the highs uh, high area and um, here we have line number 14 which followed a fluid movement this fluid movement compared to recent price lines they contain five days of price movement the daily movement can contain three upward gaps to exhaustion point or three downward gaps to exhaustion point in the selling um, so they they're in from a trading point of view they're the actual opposite to what we might think they're a very strong bar but they can lead to exhaustion, uh, an exhaustive move during the week. And as we see exhaustive moves down, this is the place we start to look after this. This is the place we start to look for uh, um, buying, uh, buying areas. So again, um, consider the high price movements. Line eight, opening and closing a bozu called a Mara bozu can lead to exhaustion. And I'll go onto the chart. Uh, in here, so here is the low down through here. Uh, can be a weak selling line. The following price movement suggests buying. So we saw uh, line number three in a low price area here, and then set the pivot, and we saw the market rally uh, again. So um, they um, come up on your charts uh, that you do need to use a little bit of discretion around your observations. That otherwise we're going to end up jumping at shadows. So if we apply um, our methodology um, to some basic charting techniques, use the, can, use the Higuro method as, as a method of um, looking for swing points or indicating swing points, and then uh, apply some basic charting techniques, and uh, you'll be away. Um, with that, I'm going to try and now go to uh, just very quickly. Um, go to some charts uh, here that I was looking at this morning. Um, Tesla, this is, um, again, this is a weekly chart. Uh, we can see that the uh, trend indicator is sitting around the middle in between the 10% line, so nothing so important, but it is starting to trend down uh, in here since October uh, in through November, December. There's your 15 at the top. Uh, there's your 15 at the low and the following line was green we saw the rally there was your number three which indicates one to two weeks in advance that you may see a top in place and there was 15 confirming that top we saw the decline uh, 15 again here no candle uh, we didn't see a green candle after that and we see the support levels uh, declining uh, on this chart current uh, resistance uh, support resistance is around 186 um, so uh, line number one turned up last couple of weeks. This is this week's trading, but line number one turned up here. Uh, after one week's movement, the body is below the midpoint, indicating buying at a lower price. The weekly range has tested higher prices. With the downtrend, so this is a downtrend in place, um, it becomes short covering. The following lines, even if a rise in price takes place, will be limited and a lower price will be set. Small fluctuations will occur in price and will tend to move to the center. Any upside price movement should be a place to secure profits from short positions. So within the context of a downtrend, line number one becomes the area 
where the shorts come in, cover their positions, uh, it would seem, and we see a little bit of buying and until um, sentiment moves the stock lower. So it doesn't indicate that a low is in place uh, because our trend observation is always our first observation in our um, in our observation of price. Um, the other one here was, um, let me move that out of the way. Okay, the other one here was this um, Cincinnati. I mentioned that line number five doesn't turn up very often. Well, one turned up last week. Uh, and if I just click on that, we can see the expert advisor changes to give uh, an observation of that of that bar. So line number five does not appear very often, a very strong line when found in low price areas. Well, this is actually a high price area because our, our swing indicator was way out here um, above our 10% range and line number five has turned up. Um, so opening price is Bozu, closing price is above the midpoint. The following week can show a similar line as regards the strong buying line when found in a low price area. Um, some of the descriptions around Huguro uh, are limited. Um, this is the really the text uh, from the book, um, Japanese chart of charts, um, uh, but it overlaid with some observations around um, price action. We start to see um, potential swing trades and um, potential trends unfolding and entry points available into those trends. So Bobby, I've done my hour. I'm going to uh, wind it up there. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take those. Okay, we'll see if any come in right now. Guys, feel free to type in any questions into the GoToWebinar chat or YouTube. All right, Gary. Yeah, I'm not seeing any, you know, additional right. questions. Very good. But I just wanted to say, I think you did a fantastic job. It was a very informative uh, session. I really enjoyed um, having you go through all of that with us. All right. Very good. Thank you, guys. Yep. And uh, also wanted to say, I look forward to your next presentation that you're going to be doing. Um, yeah. Yay. next week too. So that'll be great. We'll have you on for then as well. Uh, but just more Australia focused. Uh, and if any other questions come in, you know, maybe later on, someone that watches this video on uh, YouTube or catches the recording, um, is there somewhere you would want us to direct questions? We can direct them to our oh, team or to you. You can, yeah, you can forward them on to me if you like. Um, you can forward okay. them on to me. I think um, I down the bottom here, it has a bit of information um about me it hasn't got my web address email address on there but no you're more than welcome to forward them on to me and i'll get i'll get answers back um as quickly as i can keeping in mind that we're almost 12 hours out of sync with each other yeah <laughs> um well i have a couple of slides prepared here so i'm just going to go ahead and show my screen See, and and I'll provide people um, with a place where they can go to ask questions and as well as sign yeah, up sure. for a trial of Metastock. Um, so just to kind of touch on this a little further, everything, uh, all of today's demonstration has been done within Metastock, uh, which is, um, you know, a technical analysis software. We've been in business for over 30 years. We've actually won uh, the Stocks and Commodities magazine um, uh, basically reader's choice award for our uh, price category for over 31 years straight now. So a uh, really amazing accomplishment there. And you can use Metastock to scan the markets, uh, to back test different trading, uh, different trading strategies, um, to forecast the markets uh, and much, much more. And it's starting as low as just $59 a month to get the software and the data in an end of day format. And you would have the Herguro method included as a template for free inside of Metastock. And if you guys wanna sign up for a trial where you can get three months access for the price of just one month, uh, you can do that at metastock.com forward slash Gary Burton. Um, and if you go to that site there, you can also like access our chat room as well by just going to metastock.com. Uh, and we have a team of guys there that can answer any additional questions you have 
or we can forward the questions along uh, to Gary as well, considering there is that time zone difference there. Uh, another thing that you guys should keep in mind, if you do sign up for a subscription of Metastock, whether it be for a trial or if you already own the software and you have questions or anything of that nature, we offer free white glove setup and installation service. So uh, not only can we help answer any technical questions you may have or provide you further guidance on the strategies within the software, uh, but we can actually do the full installation process for you and kind of help customize things to meet your standards uh, and to make sure you're taken care of. We also have uh, free and limited access to recorded trainings too. We have hundreds of hours of videos though um, if you, you don't have to go through all of it, obviously, we also just have a really quick getting started manual and, and quick videos going over all the basic features and everything to help you get started uh, if you're interested in the platform. And we do also have a real-time version of the software available, so if you wanted intraday access, as well as if you wanted to access like our news and fundamentals and things of that nature, uh, that'll come inside of our Metastock real-time software, uh, and that starts as low as $210 a month for Metastock and the Zenith data subscription it requires, or again, Metastock daily charts for end-of-day analysis, uh, or if you're just interested in using the Haguro method, you can use Metastock DC, and that starts at just $59 a month, $69 if you're using it on the U.S. markets. Um, and again, to sign up for that trial, just metastock.com forward slash Gary Burton, uh, and you can get three months access for the price of one. Uh, you can also just visit us at metastock.com if you have any further questions. Uh, you can find our chat room right on the home page too. Uh, but I want to say thanks again to Gary for coming on today and sharing his vast amount of knowledge with us. Uh, he really does such a great job of kind of going through the markets, making it uh, make sense to the Hagro method is uh, interesting. It's different from a lot of the other strategies uh, that some people have utilized. And I think Gary um, kind of talks about it in a way that really makes it make sense. So I appreciate that. Uh, and thanks as always to him. And I hope the rest of you have a great uh, rest of your night or morning, depending you know, where you may be. Uh, and we hope to see you all uh, for the next Metastock webinar. Always keep an eye on our website for any upcoming uh, presentations or things of that nature. And uh, that's it. Thanks, you. Thanks all so much and have a great night. Hi, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. Before you go, I have two quick things for you. One, thanks for joining us today. We love having you here at our webinars and viewing our videos. So what I'd like to invite you to do before you go is like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us a great deal and it helps us bring you more awesome content like today's video. The second thing is we have a great ebook on trading that you can get for free. If you go to metastock.com slash YouTube book, you can get a free copy of The Secrets of Successful Traders. It's a great book with lots of content from traders just like yourself who can teach you some of the secrets that they have learned. Thanks for taking a second with me and learning about those two things. Thanks for joining us and keep on trading.